Why don't we pray again? And Father God, we thank you for just, again, the warmth of your love, Lord, and the moving of your spirit upon our lives, Lord, and in our hearts and lives, Lord. You move, you minister, Lord, and we thank you for just richly touching us, Lord, and ministering your love to us. Father, we pray for those who are away, those who might be ill and going through some uh, difficulties in recovery and so on and so forth, some on vacation, some on uh, uh, absent for whatever reason, some working, Lord, while uh, they'd love to be here, but uh, they just can't. But we pray, Lord God, that whatever the situation is, whatever uh, uh, the scenario is, Lord, you would move and you might minister, you might bring your touch to each and every heart and life, Lord your encouragement and your great love and the fellowship of your spirit with, with them, Lord. We thank you, Father. We praise you for faithfully gathering us this morning. And we do pray, Lord, uh, for those that we've been ministering to, Lord, and those that we've been praying for, Lord. We see you bring salvation to hearts and lives, Lord, and we thank you for your long-suffering, Lord. You suffered long with us, Lord, and you suffered long with others that they might give their hearts and lives over to you, Lord. And we again thank you, we praise you for your faithfulness and love, your mercies are, are, are new and fresh for us this morning again. We ask uh, these things in Jesus' name that you might bless us as we go now. Amen and amen. Hey guys, Colossians chapter 3, we're going to pick up our study uh, today in uh, verse 12 of chapter 3. But again, we want to welcome each and every one back uh, uh, guys back from vacation, back from the mainland, back some uh, ill and so on and so forth. But, you know, it's, uh, uh, Hilda just asked me, how, how are you? How's your, how's your, how are you doing? And so on and so forth. But, you know, we got a lot of things going on, ongoing. I have a praise report that one of the guys that I've been praying for for quite a few years, uh, uh, you know, we, he moved to the mainland. He retired off of the waterfront and you know, he, he, I guess he's, you know, you got pretty much everything. You got a home, you got money, you got this, you got that, all the possessions, and so on and so forth. But it turned out that he finally shared with me that, yeah, my health is failing. And, you know, I, I knew that I had prayed with him through uh, a time he had a little bit of a heart scare. You know, uh, he's such a type A type of personality that he got so excited. I think his heart went into doing flip-flops and he got through that. But, you know, he... He finally came back and, you know, I, I called him that last time. That, you know, every, anytime there's an incident in Las Vegas, I call him, hey, how you doing? I hope you wasn't there at that music festival or whatever it might be. And he says, I'm good. But, you know, he finally came back. He says, hey, he didn't say it exactly this way, but he said the next time I come back is probably going to be the last time I come back. Can you do my service, he's asking me. Because he said, my health is failing and, you know, I don't think I have much longer. And, you know, I, I just, uh, I, I said, oh, I, you know, I, I knew you were coughing and blah, 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 but he, did, he brushed it off. He said, oh, I'm doing carpentry work at, at the house. My wife is having me do some carpentry work, so I'm breathing the dust, but his, really his lungs were in bad condition. So, um, uh, so I says, I gave him some scriptures and, you know, gave him some encouragement. And again, he's like this Nicodemus. He comes under the cover of darkness. He comes on the side and he just says, hey, this is going on. And he never says, hey, can you pray for me? But it's all, always like, hey, can you pray for me? Because I'm going through this, I'm going through that. And nobody else knows. It's a very private thing with the guy. He would, I'd be, we'd be off on the side and he'd tell me, hey, pray for me. You know what? Oh, uh, I'm going through this, I'm going through my, my family this, my family that. And, uh, you know, I, uh, praise the Lord, we got a, some Calvary chapels up there on the mainland right close by. And uh, uh, I says, hey, how's about if I have one of our pastors come and visit you guys? I told the wife, and she said, yeah, that'd be good. Have them call us. And the guy says, okay. I went and I visited and we had a good time. I took my wife, the wife, the wives got uh, uh, really together. And this guy was on the hit list because his wife is a Christian. But uh, 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 the, a week, two weeks later, it's, hey, Russell, pray for us because he fell down. He hit his head. He hit his shoulder. He's in a lot of pain. He's in uh, the ER now, and they're going to check him in probably. I said, I don't have 
so and so's number, but can you can you uh, give me his number? So I you know called the pastor. I let the pastor know, and the next day he was there in the hospital, and the report was, hey, he gave his life to the Lord. You know, finally he says, hey, bro, you know you you've been uh, all this time you've been resisting the Lord. Don't you think it's about time you gave your life to the Lord? And he said, yeah, I'm ready. And uh, you know the the message came back to me: the angels are rejoicing in heaven. You know, so you know I I, I wanna. Uh, uh, praise the Lord for that. I want to thank you guys for that because you guys are part of that ministry with the Steve Ross and all this and that. Yeah, this guy was in management, so there's a little bit of a tension. Yeah, because the, the management always thought that hey Russell, you're too friendly with labor, but but this guy was kind of close with the labor force, and you know he saw that that I was close with those guys, and he gave me the opportunity, and it brought the Lord the opportunity that, you know, via long distance, we cannot do this, but it's God's ministry. Uh, God wants to save the people. So, you know, he did that. In that, I rejoice. And yet, you know, as things, things go well, other things start coming in, and, you know, we have to make other arrangements to, hey, can you go out and can you minister? Can you do this? Can you do that? Are you available? Uh, uh, so, you know, uh, things, are, things are exciting, uh, and uh, it's good. You know, and uh, thank you for your prayers for Levon too, because she is improving a little bit. But you know, uh, just uh, it's a rather difficult time of the year for her. I think at this particular time of the year with the uh, coughing and then all the side effects of the medication. Yeah, but again, Colossians chapter three, guys. Colossians chapter three. Sorry, long short story, long. Uh, <laughs> Colossians three, uh, verse twelve. He says, and so, uh, we, I know we went through this, but it's such a good place to start. Yes, so, as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Time and time again, the writers of the Word of God, the writers of the Bible, guys, the Holy Spirit himself reminds us. And here he begins, and so he says, chosen of God. He reminds us, hey, you guys are chosen of God. Remember, he was working, uh, writing to a bunch of believers in Colossae. They were not only Jews, but there were Gentiles mixed in. And, you know, again, the things of the world were trying to creep in. And Paul's reminder to the church is, you guys are chosen of God, holy and beloved. You know, you're set apart for God. You are beloved in the Lord. The reminder is, hey, God loves you so much. God loves you so much that he sent his son, his only son, to die on the cross. He's saying, hey, don't go, don't go being moved away by these false teachers. But he says, put on the Lord's heart. Put on the Lord's heart. It's he who is filled with that compassion. And, you know, at times, you know, we can be very uncompassionate, uncaring type of people. You know, we can just walk past that person on the sidewalk going through a hard time. I tell you, yesterday morning, my heart broke. There was a couple downstairs in the parking lot in the corner, two mopeds, a little folding mattress, and they were just kind of hunkered right into the little the corner where... Um, they were just trying to get out of the wind and the rain because, you know, it was pretty chilly, man. With the, the wind was nasty, and they were just trying to get out of there. And I says, Lord, I, I think that I have a little view of that compassion because you're filled with compassion. The Lord is filled with compassion. And, you know, rather than being uncaring, you know, God wants us to put on that heart of compassion because Jesus is filled with kindness. And I heard that somebody came downstairs and confronted that couple after filming them and, and telling them, hey, get out of here because, you know, we're going to call the cops and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, uh, uh, really not being too kind in how they dealt with the people, you know. Of course, you know, uh, maybe it, it's not that acceptable, but, you know, you can treat people with a little bit of respect, a little bit of kindness goes a long way, uh, recognizing that, hey, they are, they are a person, they do have feelings, and, you know, God, God, God has feelings with that. You know, he's filled with compassion. Jesus is filled with com uh, kindness. And, you know, he's humble. And that's something that we're not uh, too good at at times because uh, he's humble, he's gentle, he's patient. But he set a high bar as a witness for us to emulate, you know, that, 
that we could be a humble and gracious because so, sometimes, uh, so much of the time, we might be on our high horse. We might be on the thing that says, hey, we're so high and mighty. And sometimes we're not gentle and we're not patient, but Jesus is the one. He's calling us. And Paul is reminding the church, hey, put on that kindness and compassion. Be humble and uh, be filled with that humility and the gentleness and patience because, you know, we're so impatient. You know, we're so impatient at times, and we, we snap, we bite, we bark. But no one could ever achieve this on our own. We couldn't do it on our own because it's just not in the fleshly nature. We go forward, we step back. What is it, uh, uh, you know, with uh, nations, uh, relationships with other nations? We take one step forward, we go two steps backward. In of ourselves, we are impatient, demanding, and at times we, we, we can get puffed up with pride and unkind harsh rather than compassionate. And we struggle with putting off the flesh as the spirit wages war uh, with the flesh. And we, we want to put on that heart of Christ. Daily we pick up our cross. Daily we got to follow after him. And it's a good reminder. It's a great thing that we start off the day with prayer. It's a good time we start off the, the day with a bit of the word because once we walk out the door, a lot of times we forget that. And, you know, we just, uh, we just revert back to that own natural man. And uh, God, God is reminding us, and the Bible is reminding us over and over. And sometimes we, we think that, hey, we studied that. Hey, didn't we hear that in Ephesians or Philippians? And yet, why is that? We need the reminder. You know why we so, you guys, not you guys, but some of us are so dense and so dumb that we need that reminding. He says, and beyond all of these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And, uh, uh, excuse me, he says, bearing with one another and forgiving uh, each other. Whoever has a complaint against another, just as the Lord forgave you, you should, al you should also. Uh, the thought of re uh, bearing with one another signifies to hold up against the thing or to bear, uh, to bear with. Aha. Uh, the word is actually two words in the Greek. It's, uh, one portion means up. Uh, aha, and uh, the other word, etchomai, to have and to hold. And I was thinking, hey, that sounds like the wedding vow. Like, hey, do you, do you take this man or this woman to have and to hold? And that's what the Lord is asking us, that we would bear with one another. Can you, can you bear with one another? Can you have and can you hold as you bear uh, your brother or your sister up? in the love of Jesus Christ. I thought, you know, I thought this is, can't be a, it can't be a, 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 a coincidence because, you know, Vines is pretty right on with this stuff. He says to have and to hold, to hold one another up, to hold, a, 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 to support a person, to, to be like a bearing wall, you know, a bearing wall out on the, on the job site or out on your yard or whatever it might be. The bearing wall just bears up a great weight, a great burden. And, you know, at times, uh, do we bear one, uh, up under that burden? Do we bear one another up? Do we have that ability, the love of Christ in us, to have and to hold with one another? Wow. Uh, heavy, guys. Related words, uh, you can see, that are related to this, this thought of bearing with one another is the word endure forbear or even suffer hey, do you suffer with that person wow and sometimes we don't like suffering huh? we don't like to suffer we rather just read them off or whatever but you know the lord is saying hey we gotta suffer with one another forgiving as the lord has forgiven you and that's the greatest example you know as we um as we take communion the lord says hey do this in remembrance of what I've done, and, and we think we think that Lord, you've done all for us, and we think about hey, where you've rescued us from the depths and the depravity of sin, and the things that you know our own testimonies. We can go right on, around the room, and each one of us would have a testimony. God, this is what you've done. This is what you've delivered me from. And though I looked all nice on the outside, I was pretty bad on the inside and that's what it is and you know uh, the lord has forgiven us we should forgive others 14 he says and beyond these things put on love which is that perfect bond of unity beyond all, all of this put on love that perfect bond of unity guys uh, 
And it's easy to love the lovable, but you know, sometimes the unlovable, it's a little bit more difficult. But he says, put on love. And that word put on, again, is like the putting on of a garment, putting on a robe, putting on the, the garment of praise, that robe of righteousness, like putting on your jacket when you come out you know, on a morning like this. Uh, I'm so glad I have this old raincoat that uh, uh, I didn't like. I said, oh, the hood doesn't fit real good. But I tell you, I was on, uh, on a job site the other morning, and the, wind was, the rain was blowing sidewards. The wind was just coming down from Kalihi Valley, and we were right there on the, in Honolulu Harbor. And man, I, I zippered up that jacket, and I put my baseball cap on, and I said, oh, I feel sorry for the guys that are in their dress slacks and their dress shirts, the guys bidding the jobs, the guys that always stay in the office. <laughs> I said, I'm glad that I'm dressing like a regular construction guy. I'm ready. And, and you know, the thing with that is, uh, like, putting on that raincoat, putting on that rain jacket, we, he says, put on love. Put on the love of Christ. You know, take off those old filthy rags of uh, self-righteousness and put on the garments of praise. In 15, he goes on, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called with one body, and be thankful. The, things that, the thing that catches my eye is be thankful. Um, you know, uh, Wearsby used to have these series of books, uh, be thankful, be blah, blah, blah. It, it used to always start with a B, but it was always from the word of God that we ought to be this, we ought to be that. And here in, uh, in Colossians, Paul reminds the church, be thankful, be thankful for the peace of God. I think that um, uh, yesterday we were praying, the guys were praying, and I, you know, it just really dawned on my heart that I said, the guys are here. I know that we all had a, a, a roof over our head. We all have you know, food in the refrigerator and clothes on our back. And I just said, hey, Lord, you know, we prayed, hey, Lord, we're so thankful. Just for the basic things. We might not have everything we want, but we have the basic needs of, you know, some shelter. And my heart just went back to that couple hunkered down in the corner like, hey, they, did, they didn't have the, uh, all they wanted was to get out of the wind and the rain, you know. And here we are. Sometimes we think that, oh, we got, we got this, you know, my plumbing is backing up and the drain don't drain good. I know we, the, the, you know, the termites are eating the cabinets and this and that. And we're so ungrateful, you know. And we think, oh, Lord, here it is. We, sl we, sh we, sh we shut the sliding door. And, oh, we can see all the foul weather on the mountains up there in Moanalua Valley. And you keep it all out. And we have this nice little warm place, a little place, a little spot that we got the shelter that shelter is in you and the shelter is from you. And uh, again, we, we, we can be thankful. In verse 17, he says, he says, giving thanks through him, Jesus, to God the Father. And you know, the thought again, be thankful. And um, I like verse seven of chapter two. He says, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him, established in your faith, just as you were instructed, overflowing with gratitude. Now, do you think the guys in the church had everything perfect and uh, easy peasy and rosy tozy and all that? You know, they, they must have had their hardships and going through things. But he says, just as you were instructed, overflowing with gratitude. You know, have a heart of gratitude. Yeah, we got, yeah, we hurting. Yeah, we got this. Yeah, we got these worries and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, financial pressures, whatever it might be. But he says, uh, have that heart. Uh, overflowing with gratitude, but uh, uh, I, I thought that's so good. He says, uh, uh, actually, I was going to uh, read that 6 and 7. Therefore, as you have received Christ, so walk in him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him, establishing your faith, and you are instructed, overflowing with gratitude. Walk in him, be rooted and grounded, and be built up in him. Be established in your faith just as you were instructed. And again, overflowing with gratitude. He thought of thankfulness in our hearts and that attitude of gratitude for and towards the Lord. You know, and uh, we, God is so gracious to us and he's given us so much and so much more than we can think. But 16 and 17 of chapter 3, uh, he says, um, 
Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts uh, to the Lord. And whatever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. The word of God brings wisdom as we receive his teaching and uh, Mike, last, last week he shared about reading through the Bible reading calendar and sometimes on the weekend or sometimes when you skip a day, you got to catch up. And I was thinking, hey, I got to catch up, man. <laughs> because I'm getting behind, I'm slipping behind. But the Word of God brings wisdom as you receive His teachings. And we are again filled with thankfulness in our hearts to God. You know, I love this portion where he says, with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We don't have to go too far because so much of the, the word of God is filled uh, with the songs of God that we sing. In Psalm 118, uh, verse 4, it says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And, you know, we used to sing that song before. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made, we will rejoice. See, when I when I do this, I gotta sing for you guys, so you guys gotta bear with me. <laughs> well, you know, it's right out of Psalm 118. Psalm 71, 19 says, Thou is great things, thou has done great things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we, we just used to sing that. Thou has done great things, hallelujah. Thou has done great things, hallelujah. Thou has done great things, praise his holy name. And Levan, I used to drive Levan crazy. She said, hey, that ukulele sounds like it's going the same things. And I say, hey, I'm just singing that same chorus over and over, man, because you're praising the Lord. But, you know, I try and change it up. <laughs> I only know two chords. Hey, <laughs> Thou has done great. That's all you need. Thou has done great things, hallelujah. You know, praise be to, to Yahweh. You know, praise, halal be to Yahweh. You know, bless his holy name. Psalm 63 says, the loving, Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, so I will bless thee. I will lift up my hands unto thy name. You know, right out of the Psalms, guys. So, you know, a lot of the old songs from Maranatha music, a vineyard, the vineyard music, you know, well, the vineyard, those guys came out of Calvary Chapel anyway, so, but, um, you know, the, the songs are just these simple songs of praise and worship. It was rather simple back then in those days, you know. Uh, now we, you know, it's kind of, sometimes you're going, it's like going to a concert rather than worshiping. But, uh, and, and a lot of times guys that do concerts have a hard time transposing over to become a worship leader because they're used to, to performing rather than worshiping, you know. And, and worship is very, very simple. Uh, Self-effacing, we turn away from ourselves, we turn to the Lord. Psalm 19, 14 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable uh, in thy sight, O Lord. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. You know, I know I, as I read these to you guys, you guys know these songs. They said, oh yeah. We used to sing those songs. Oh, yeah, I heard those songs, you know. But these are the things that Paul is saying. It would all wisdom, teaching and, and admonishing one another. And it, does it say that, oh, uh, the pastor has to do that? No, it says teaching and one another. It's a one another fellowship. It's a one another encouragement. It's a one another as we admonish one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness. Here's again that theme, thankfulness in your hearts to God. Okay, 18 and 19. Wives, be subject to your husbands. As uh, is fitting in the Lord, husbands, love your wives and do not be embittered against them. The subject uh, B, uh, the subject B, the word uh, subject is primarily uh, a military term. Be subject, he says, be subject. Uh, is, is that military term, primarily it means to rank under. The Greek word is hupo, which means 
which means under and tasso, to arrange. It's like to arrange under, be subject to. This suggests a divine ordering by the Lord where the husband lovingly assumes the responsibility, assumes full responsibility for the family, guys. Uh, and, and the husband not only re re uh, assumes the responsibility for the family, but sought to serve the needs of those who are under his authority. You know, uh, sometimes uh, uh, kids today, uh, they say, hey, I'm 18, I can do what I want, I can, uh, I can drink. No, you cannot, you gotta be 21. But you know, uh, guys still drink, but whatever it might be, but um, again, the husband or the father lovingly assumed responsibility for the family. He sought to serve the needs of those who were under his authority. The wife's responsibility, guys, ranged far and wide from responsibilities in the home and with children, if there were children, uh, but into the marketplace, out into the marketplace, and into the fields, planting and harvesting. The proverb says that a virtuous woman is the crown of her husband. The virtuous woman is the crown of her husband. It's not me that's saying, that's Proverbs 12. So when you think that behind every good man is a greater woman, hey, that might be a little bit true. Behind every good man, there's a great woman standing behind that husband. Uh, uh, if the wife worked hard at the task before her, it greatly benefited her husband. Jews believed that a man could not rise to a place among the leaders of Israel only uh, could rise to a place among the leaders of Israel only if his wife was wise and talented. In other words, if the wife, the wife was no good and she wasn't too talented, she wasn't too akamai, she wasn't walking in the wisdom of the Lord, it, uh, her husband would falter. But if that woman was, uh, 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 was a wise and talented woman, she would just lift her husband up to a place of even more responsibility and leadership within the community of believers, within the Jewish community. I'm reading this, this is a, and this is a study on Jewish lifestyle of the families back in those biblical days, okay guys. What the husband provided and defended for his family and assumed the spiritual leadership within the family, functioning as the family priest. In other words, we gotta take our rightful place in uh, speaking into the hearts and lives of the, those given to our charge. In regards to children, a Jewish scholar said that a good father should push his children away with his left hand and draw them near with the right hand. In other words, this, um, this delicate balance between firmness and affection typi typified the ideal Jewish father. In other words, uh, firmness and affection, you know, had to be tempered. It's, it's kind of like there's a delicate balance where you push the child away, but you draw them near. And uh, hopefully, you know, uh, we've done that job, but, you know, hopefully we can pray for that, you know, with grandkids. Hopefully we can pray for that with those around us, that, you know, that same wisdom would transfer into the parents and into that family situation. Verses 20 and 21, children, be obedient to your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not exasperate your children that they might not lose heart. The word obedient is a verb that's filled with action, guys. Literally, it is to listen or attend, uh, to submit and to obey. Here, uh, of the children to parents, yet it's the same, um, in the same breath, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Don't provoke them to anger. Don't provoke them to frustration. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I, 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 I've seen it before, you know, when I was a kid and um, within certain families, you, you kind of think that, hey, you see fathers teasing or even tormenting their children to a point of tears. And, and it's not a good scene. And, you know, I, I thought, wow, and that's kind of cruel, you know, and, and uh, things like that happen, you know, and uh, uh, it's sad, you know, because I remember that as a little kid, I think, hey, why is that guy, you know, like torturing the little kid, torturing the little child, you know, it, it, that's not a great good scene, but I guess things like that happen. And even worse in our society here in the United States today, the fathers are absent, you know, so much of the time. And from the 1960s or whatever it is, the make love, not war, blah, 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 and all these things of the social 
uh, economic reform where we just doled out welfare and stuff like that. And the fathers were often a absentee fathers. And, uh, uh, you know, life has been hard for the family. The family has degenerated and almost dis disintegrated. And uh, uh, it's a difficult time, you know, for the family. The family really is the basis of our society. And we've seen the enemy come in and rip off and rob and uh, lie, steal, and cheat, and uh, uh, defraud the kids. And, you know, I don't buy that stuff. Oh, you know, local style, you know, uh, I, oh, I get, uh, she got three kids, but all from three different fathers. And uh, I, I don't buy that. You know, I say God has a much better plan, you know. Don't excuse it away, you know. But, you know, you cannot help it. You love the kid, you love the kids, but, there's some, God had a better plan where one man, one woman, you know, and, and, and the family would come under that. You know, and uh, it's the same thing like with abortion. It's a tender subject, guys. And, and you always got to chamfer it with it. Hey, somebody in this room might have had an abortion, blah, blah, blah. And some of them, you know, some of the people, they're haunted by it. And some of the guys like us, you know, I was just telling one of the ladies, hey, we're so cruel because we we had this pact that, you know, uh, if anybody got into trouble, we'd all pitch in and, you know, we'd send the girl off to the abortion clinic and blah, blah, blah. How cruel, how crass that is, yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we that's, the, that's where the human mind was, the nature was, kind of in the gutter, you know. And and, uh, and and yet we think that hey we've aborted a whole generation of kids you know, but the God meant so much more, and so much better for the families guys, and you know we can do what we can we can pray we can intervene we can do our part, that you know the uh, families that we do have the existing families have the best shot of being the best loved and the best cared for and nurtured kids and grandkids, and we go from there. And, you know, we, of course, God wants us to step in at times to uh, put our little input and, and so on and so forth. Uh, as leaders within the, the Christian community, 23 and 24, he says, oh, uh, 22, verse 22, Slaves in all things, obey those who are your masters on earth, not with external service, but with those as those who merely please men, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. And I think the key word is sincere. Be sincere in our work. Uh, uh, the bottom line, again, uh, the word obey is the same word we saw in verse 20, obedience. Children be obedient. The same word here, obey, uh, is that same word uh, in, uh, to submit, to obey, to listen, attend to. But as Joseph served the Pharaoh in Egypt with sincerity of heart, the Lord was able to bless him and use him. And he was still fearing God. And the Lord was able to bless and use him uh, unto the salvation of, uh, of Israel and uh, the children of Israel. At times, guys, you know, we might be the most faithful at what we do. Uh, uh, again, uh, hopefully we're faithful at what we do. And we do it really as, as, uh, with sincerity of heart. But he says, whatever we do, do your work hardly as for the Lord rather than for man, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. Uh, the bottom line is whatever we do, do it all to the glory of God. We might be a student. We might be a construction worker. We might be a chef, a cook, or we might be you know, a, pushing the broom, whatever it might be. Whatever we do, do it all for, to the glory of God for uh, he will reward us. And, you know, something would say, hey, there's something different about that guy. There's something different about that person. And uh, it, it's the Lord working in us and through us all to his glory. Verse 25, uh, and uh, he who does wrong will receive the consequences of the wrong which he has done, and that without partiality. Oh, this is a hard one to end on, yeah? This is the end, but uh, if you're an evildoer, why should you expect the blessings and uh, benefits of the Lord? Oh, God never blessed me. Well, did you ever bless God? Well, uh, you know, you think of that. You might say, God hasn't done anything for me. Why should I believe in him? Why didn't he help heal my loved one? Or why didn't he help when I went through that difficulty with my kids or with that finances? Or why should I trust in him now? 
you know, and, and uh, it's a difficult question because, you know, I think that there are a lot of people out there in the world and they think like that. They have those questions. And you might say, hey, I'll pray for you, I'll do this and that. But in their hearts they say, hey, why should I trust God now? Look at my situation. We, we, we quite often, uh, we will often quote a portion of scripture, uh, Hebrews 11:6. he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Yet we leave off the entirety of the verse and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. You know, he says that hey, we gotta come uh, with, with faith. Uh, uh, without that faith, it is impossible to please him. And Ephesians 2, 8 tells us, for by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. God gives us the peace, the grace, and the faith to believe. Uh, all that we need, we have to receive it. My friend in Las Vegas, he was such a hard guy. He was always a, like a self-made guy, very prideful. He says, hey, I built these cranes. I took care of these cranes all these years. I ran all this. I ran all that. Uh, I built this. I built my kingdom at, in, at home. I built my kingdom here on the waterfront. And, uh, but yet God had given him enough grace to say, hey, I'll give Jesus a chance. I want to receive you into my heart and my life. And sometimes God, has, God goes a long way to take all the, all the fight out of us. And we just say, hey, God, I surrender to you. You know what I mean? I tap out to you. Remember we used to say that, hey, I tap out. Hopefully you're not going to get knocked out, but you tap out. For the sinner, the wrongdoer, the one who has hardened his heart against the Lord, it's hard. It's a hard road that will surely be filled with disappointment and sorrow. If you harden your heart against the Lord, it's going to be filled with sorrow. For the child of God, though life in this world is filled with bumps, and hardships and ups and downs and trials and temptations as well as joy and love it's his joy that is our strength it's his love that never fails colossians uh, 3 14 15 and 17 says put on love he says in 15 be thankful in 17 he says give thanks through him to god the father you know in all these things we can be a people of thanks or we can be a people of complaint and grumbling and questioning God. I don't want to question God. And I know that deep down in your hearts, you guys don't want to question God. You don't want to say, why God this? Why God that? You know, because you might get like, but like brother Cooper, you, you might get that one kili kili shot. He's going to take you out, you know. And, and uh, you want God, hey, I, I give in to you. I tap out, man. I want you. I need you. I submit. And Father God, we do thank you that you, you brought us to that place of coming to you, Lord, in humble submission, Lord, acknowledging that we couldn't do it on our own strength, Lord, acknowledging that it's only by you, Lord, that we can put on love, that we can be thankful to you, Lord, that we can be uh, give thanks uh, to Jesus Christ through him, to God the Father, Lord. And we pray, Father God, that in these last days, many, many more, some are closer to the last day than others are Lord and we just pray Father God that the, real, the realization and the reality of life and death and eternal life in you there's no choice Lord really it's a no brainer that we, we ought to give Jesus a chance and we ought to ask him to come into our hearts and lives so speak to the many lives that might be hardened might be ears stopped up Lord hearts hard Lord uh, uh, Father God, eyes blinded by the sinful ways of uh, this world, Lord. But we do thank you, Lord. We do praise you for your faithfulness and your long-suffering, Lord, as you suffer. Your heart of compassion, Lord. Your mercy and uh, uh, your gentleness and your patience that you've shown to us, Lord, and you show to a, to a world out there. We thank you, Father. We praise you for your faithfulness and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Stand and finish in song, please.